outer space to be moved not of your own accord ask why you stirred your milo sweet eyelids damp lashes onyx fingers feeling for knobs why you entered morning still as a street light the air swollen pregnant with indigo and orange skin the possibility of dawn pressing those wet lids each humid desire gaseous and immense licks in precious wavelengths just beyond the quiet door frame the earth unveiling hot and new stealing the colors of saturn It is easy to feel like you don't matter when you're rendered invisible, even though matter is your birthright, everything that you are. This project is an undertaking born of necessity. Black destruction is commonplace. It moves in the erasure of black women's experiences, the representations of black trauma in media, the physical destruction of black life. This piece seeks to witness the beauty of black creation. My project is a series of nine poems and three triptychs. Each triptych includes a 24 by 36 inch oil paint portrait of the creator, an 18 by 24 inch chalk pastel portrait of their creative process, and an 11 by 14 inch oil painting of the finished creation. I've always been fascinated by the idea of likening black bodies to celestial ones. To communicate that a life is a monument of the universe is daunting. Likening black birth to the origin of a galaxy is a good start. That precious wonder, the way a black creator's work is their undeniable legacy, a birth within a birth. That is the quiet reverence with which we must behold black creators as unquestioned and natural. Black creation is precious and its existence is owed to something even more spectacular, the birth of black creators. The argument is life. The little imprints they leave, evidence. For a geology class I took last spring, we studied the dawn of the universe and learned how stars like our sun came to be. The star life cycle essentially refers to the process that takes a star from its birth as a dust cloud to its death by supernova. What caught me most were the vivid, swirling visuals of brilliant dancing heat and cool, expansive, noble darkness. There was also a simultaneous complication of the concept of darkness and of blackness as a site of literal nothingness that is teeming with life and possibility, capable of building literal universes. I saw the protostar spinning matter from nothing, from within an atom, out of inconceivably small nuclei. I thought, that is indisputable. That is what every life should be seen as. A thing that did not exist is persistently existing. That is what it means to fashion a space for yourself as a black person. And the analogy of the star was birth. It was really interesting to document the black creation process through poetry and writing while literally engaging in it. That being said, two very important disciplines featured in this project were visual arts and writing, supplemented by the natural sciences and black feminist poetics. I chose to feature black gender marginalized people, specifically black women, because of their particular role in the intersection of erasure. 
In Theorizing in a Void, Sublimity, Matter, and Physics in Black Feminist Poetics, Zakia Iman Jackson states, I want to suggest that the ontological absence Sylvia Winters describes is not solely operative in the mode of an absent presence, but arguably when the black female body is figured, figuration may paradoxically intensify a socially imposed opacity. This complex social rendering proves the urgency of establishing the right to presence and a presentation as something sensational, something beloved. Including texts from Beloved felt like a natural way to supplement the idea of birth and love and rendering someone precious, which I strove to do with all of my subjects. I was inspired by the redactive feel of Tim Rollins and the KOS and collaging and clipping from Indijeka Akunyili Crosby, specifically in the rest of her remains. For Grandma, After Black Hands by Robert Overby. The first intimations were bubbling to fruition in the tenderest space behind my earlobe, in my fingertips, to just sweep them along those Neptune water wrists a sigh. You slipped in like a thread, like you had anchored me what did the frayed end with your mouth so it would glide and in I sank into the yellow cloth which fell so gently on your universe colored lap. You are the most precious of them, midnight hands. What life sprung from those silvery palms? What loom, what gracious pluck like a mother sucking the cloudy snot from a baby's trembling nose. The dip and settle of your arms in motion is richer than religion you kept sewing on the seventh day God gave up. Between your thighs lies my origin, your prayers against naps. They sit in blue evening strokes, the color of Genesis. Black is not shadow, it is the yellowest nucleus of sun. What is black creation? The inquiry poised like waiting palms above the keyboard's tonal teeth. When you press finger firm to key, what do you feel pushing back up against you? What sends our skin cells spiraling? What soothes the strain, the silkiest serotonin, tunes tugging at temples in tired tempos? I break the plastic silence of the Yamaha one evening. Its skeleton sings out to me. I sink life into it. My own spine prostrated in a gentle plead. We move incessant, in parallel. One works the other's body in, wills it to be corporeal. When my hand finds its familiar hold between ebony and ivory, I feel nothing, or rather, I feel like nothing again. When you create something, you fashion something into existence. You are told, you are not here, you are no matter. You were born empty, but that is no matter. But what you make persists. It is undeniable. It is proof, a living, unfolding memory. Once created, it can never be destroyed. What I mean to say is, what is creation? Dust to dust. I disappear into the measure I am making. You can be heard, but not seen. Creation is black. I exit time into space. I remember nothing. When gasless 
gaping darkness was not haunting and the color black was called possibility. No one has ever rebuked possibility. I learned my old names, infinite, blinking to life like constellations, each one brimming with immeasurable potential. I exit myself on flighted cords. I remember who I was, that I was nothing before I was taught that nothing was my name. I take the divine rite of passage. I spin loose melodies into my cool grasp like a protostar. When you learn to create life, it doesn't matter that your dark hands playmaker. A major part of my Stanford experience has been making, designing, and imagining spaces that center black communities, and I believe this project is a vital part of that mission. To me, black creation is as real and necessary as any unfathomably large system of matter flickering to life in the universe. So I can see that I'm not